PJ Kwong, and we are changing conversations for SGS Live. And in today's session, we're going to be talking about the ways that we can help clients get their products throughout the world. A topic that is top of mind in today's world with the complexity that goes hand in hand with global shipping. Let's face it, there is a lot to learn, especially when you consider the 11 billion tons of goods being shipped annually around the globe and the $30 billion price tag for exports between the U.S. and Africa in 2022 alone. So we're calling this conversation learning from other people's mistakes so you don't have to. And whether you're in Canada, the US or Mexico and beyond, this is a session that will be of interest to you. As always, I am joined by great guests and there is a lot to uncover here. So let's welcome our first guest, Lori Ritter, who is a sales executive with SGS's TFS Business Development in the US and Canada for CNP. Welcome, Lori. Hi, hello everyone from wonderful snowy New York. Snowy Toronto too, I get it. <laughs> I'd also like to welcome Roger Nunez, who is the Operations Manager at STS North America, TFS. Thanks for joining us. Hi, PJ. Hi, Lori. So from here, from the sunny Miami. Yep, sunny Miami, thank <laughs> I was going to say rub it in. Thanks a lot, Roger. Hello. Okay, great. <laughs> you got to do what you do, right? Okay, Lori, exactly. right off the top, can you tell me a little bit more about your role at SGS North America? What does that entail? Sure. So I have come to SGS with 30 years of international trade experience. I know I started at the age of five. <laughs> I give my age there. Um, I, so I was brought in about eight months ago uh, to pretty much well, kind of revamp our business strategies and really listen to what clients' needs are and really pinpoint how we can assist them. The TFS division itself has a core service area focused on the Middle East and North Africa, but we do service everywhere around the globe. Uh, we help clients basically uh, anything from a supplier verification all the way through import compliance. And I actually used to be a client of SGS in a previous life. I've used them for the supplier verification. So I was very well aware of their credibility. I had no idea the various other service areas that SGS offers. So it's really fantastic that uh, ultimately now with my years experience and the credibility of SGS, I'm here to ultimately help reduce the, uh, the client's exposures and help mitigate their risks globally. Just as I mentioned, there's a lot to uncover here and you're one of the experts to help us do that, but I'm not gonna let you off the hook, Roger. I wanna know more about what you do. What fills your days? Well, um, thank you, PJ. So um, I was brought to SES uh, due to my expertise that I have on trade, on trade, international trade, charter classification, and compliance. So, um, and to take care of one of the most important clients uh, in one of the most uh, we have in TFS North America, which is the Saudi program. Um, in in a short time, I have, I have managed so important clients, and I'm able to provide assistance to all all, all our clients. And in a short time. My commitment with the company is uh, is to maintain a high level of uh, customer service uh, with a focus on resource and smooth processes. You know, it is going to be a great conversation. So with the introductions out of the way, Lori, I'm going to come back to you for a second. If we're talking about TFS, I guess we should start by defining what that is. Sure. Well, that's a good question. TFS, uh, basically what it stands for is trade facilitation services. And what's what's really the core focus on uh, on that is really like it states, we're helping facilitate trade globally. Okay, Roger, who needs this? This question, let's let's bring you into this. Okay, thank you. So um, uh, we know what customer needs because customer actually need to export their products. 
So, and all the companies exporting com uh, products to, uh, to our PCA countries, as, as Lori mentioned before, in the MENA region, Middle East and North Africa. And, but also we deal with importers when we're dealing with the Saudi market. So we need that they, they need to ship their products, um, in, but the products need to be in compliance with the safety and quality standards in order to be placed in these markets. So uh, to we ensure that th those processes uh, develop smoothly while maintaining a high technical level required by the standard standardization and governments. So, you know, Lori, we just sort of have started to define this whole trade facilitation services or TFS. Lots of acronyms in this business, and I've heard a couple more. PV, OC, or let me get this right, C of C's. What are they and at what point do they come in uh, for our customers? Sure. Yeah, the, the PVOCs is the pre-shipment verification of conformity. And then C of C is just the certificate of conformity. So the PV side is the pre-shipment. It's done on the export side, whereas the C of C is issued after all of the verification is done. Um, we mentioned the MENA region, M-E-N-A region. The CFCs are mandatory, they're government mandated uh, for product quality assurance getting into those countries. Uh, and the fees and whatnot, they're all mandated by the governments. They have nothing to do with SGS. And now on the, on the pre-shipment side, there's different, verification, uh, different levels of that. One is either supply or cargo side, and then there's also, like I mentioned, the verification that the product is what the client is buying and it meets the standards of that country. So I just want to say, because I'm going to show off a little bit, the MENA region, Middle East and North Africa. How did I do, guys? Perfect. Woo. Okay, let's move on to one of my favorite segments, which is always our trivia question. So this is for our audience only. Lori and Roger, you can't play along because you it's, already it's know It's not the based on 80s music or anything like that, right? <laughs> Sadly, <laughs> no. So for our audience, I'd love for you to put your answers in the chat window below. And if you think you know the answer, and even if you don't, just guess along. It's a multiple choice. So from the following responses, what do you think? What are some of the items that must be included in a certificate of conformity? Number one, product identification. Number two, when the product was manufactured. Number three, all of the relevant safety uh, regulations that the product must pass. And then four is all of the above. So this is, we're looking for what uh, are some of the items that must be included in a C of C or certificate of conformity? Um, so we're going to wait a couple of seconds for people to get their answers in. So Roger and Lori, I'm going to ask you a quick question. This certificate of conformity, it seems like a lot of paperwork. Um, how necessary is all of this? Just while we're waiting for our answers. So most than most than other than being necessary is mandatory, as Lori mentioned. So for uh, most of our contracts, the certificate of conformity is is, um, is mandatory to export the products to these countries. So all the certification process and the quality documents that need to be provided is is a mandate. So the the, the companies or the exporters that need to export these products they need to pass through the certification process to us. You know what? I am delighted to report that we have an incredibly intelligent audience watching who have mostly guessed number four, which is the correct answer. All of the above is um, what is the correct answer when people are looking for what must be included in the certificate of conformity. Thank you so much for playing. Okay, we're back to our conversation. Um, Roger, I want to find out from either another acronym that I discovered called CVS. CVS. What are we talking about here? And can you please give me an example? Yes. So car, uh, CVS stands for uh, Cargo Validation Services. And, uh, and we as SDS, we can offer this service to provide customers 
with a way to uh, ensure contractual specification against purchase orders or letter of credit. Um, with a CBS, we can visually assess general condition, for example, marking labels, quantity, and even functionality. So as part of this service, uh, we can also uh, provide loading supervision, inventory count, destruction witness, which is really is highly used in cosmetic uh, and clothing uh, in order to protect intellectual property. And also we can, we can do PPE inspections in high demand during the pandemic uh, because uh, PPE uh, equipment um, materials uh, were, were really needed on those times. And also we, we provide supplier verification service that requires to, to is for, for sourcing uh, purposes. So this is what CBS stands for. Okay, Lori, I'm sure you've got lots more to add, so jump in. Well, yes, to further my bestie here, Roger is my internal <laughs> office bestie, uh, and we work very closely all day. But uh, the CVS, outside of the traditional cargo, verifying against the packing list, it's in the container, seal it up. Uh, the verification side, we also do, um, for an example, is certain countries have some requirements that if it's used equipment, for example, Bangladesh, used equipment, if you don't get a third party verification, like through SGS, that the used equipment is to standard, it's okay, to it will work when it gets in country, the importer could be subject to almost 100% additional tariff. So going through SGS to verify, yes, you know, the, the used equipment is okay and it'll work when it gets over there, really can save an importer a lot of money. So it's good to, you know, let people know about services like that. Absolutely. And you know what? I'm going to stick with you for the moment, Lori, because I want to get specific about exporting to Mexico. Mm -hmm. I know that Mexico is second in terms of country destination for total U.S. Ex exports, which represents about 16 percent of the total. So, Lori, can you tell me, you know, using Mexico, how your services fit in? Sure. Yeah, the, the NAFTA region is the U.S.'s uh, largest trading area, Mexico being our, our second largest. Since the pandemic, we've seen an uptick on reshoring and people are now taking their uh, manufacturing to Mexico, be closer to home, you know, less uh, uh, freight costs, etc. But with that, Mexico in 2020, they actually uh, put out some new regulations of their own. They de got delayed a little bit because of the pandemic situation, uh, but now they're back in play. And that uh, labeling and translation verification, otherwise known as the NOM regulations, uh, companies really need to strictly abide by it, uh, as otherwise the products are coming into the country and then they're being either, you know, delayed at customs and then they have to go through a whole process, uh, the relabeling aspect. Uh, it can get very expensive for people exporting out to Mexico if they don't, don't have the NOM regulations in order. Our SGS Mexico office is now a uh, an accredited commercial um, inspection unit which means anywhere in the world that these exports are coming into mexico sgs can certify them and get the constancia for them wow there is a lot to learn here and i just knew that our audience was going to be interested in this topic and as always for these changing conversations for sgs live we have people watching from around the globe. So let's take a quick look and see who has joined us today. Oh, hi, um, Edward from Ghana. Wow, hello. And Iran and uh, really Brazil. Brazil, everywhere. Belgium. I mean, it's wow. just wonderful. All over, all time zones. See, and that's us. We work in all time zones. You know, we take calls 9, 4 a.m. It doesn't matter. Tunisia, hey, wonderful. <laughs> So a big welcome to one and all. We want to thank you for joining us today. And if you're just joining us, I'm speaking with my S.
GS experts, Lori Ritter and Roger Nunez, and we're talking about TFS or Trade Facilitation Services. Don't forget, there's going to be a Q&A at the end of this interview segment. If you want to get in on it, leave a question or a comment in the chat window below. And for right now, I'm going to get back and turn my attention to Roger. Okay. I know that we're breaking this all down, but I want to better understand why customers don't use CVS, watch, cargo validation services as an SOP or standard operating procedure for international trading operations. See, I was paying attention. Yes. Yeah, I see that. So, well, first of all, uh, I'm going to have to I, I had to add that the reason why we're receiving so many people and people are connecting is because Lori and, uh, and me, we just open application for besties class. So we are. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, but seriously, so um, the um, the reason why um, the the CBS is, is a is a great tool for for buyers who are looking to buy in another country within uh, with this our CBS existing verification service. But it's also an excellent way to ensure um, that the, what is being purchased in another country is really what they they just ordered. And in addition to be a good service to with a very high cost benefit ratio, since with this you can avoid arbitration processes or even lawsuits. Therefore, not only buyers but also the seller should be should include this service as a part of the guarantee that the product they been uh, they have been verified and inspected by SGS. So. You know what, Lori, I'm going to come back to you for a second, because I know that, you know, you defined and we spoke briefly about the certificate of conformity. But I guess what I want to know is um, when customers really need to have one and are there any consequences for nonconformity? Sure. Well, uh, as we stated, there are contracts. Or non-compliance, that... actually. Sorry. Right, non-compliance. Yes. That's what <laughs> non I meant. I got you. <laughs> so there are, there are countries that have um, the, the CFC mandated, meaning it is required to pass through customs. Now, it is a voluntary program. However, what does that mean? That means do they need it when they ship it here from the U.S. and Canada? No. However, and there's always that caveat, uh, it goes over, you ship it out, you say, I don't want to deal with it, let it go, let the importer take care of it. Well, the importer, it's on arrival and it's caught in customs, it's delayed and it gets sent over to a holding area. Then the importer then has to go through all of the verification processes and he still needs you, the exporter, to supply the quality documents. Oh, the exporter doesn't have those ready delays, 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 and fines and penalties rack up because of that. So what I like to educate people in the U.S. and Canada exporting over to those regions that, that do require this, and actually anywhere in the world, if you're shipping to those regions that need it, get it at export. It is less costly. I was just on a call earlier with, with someone shipping over to Kenya and said it's less costly. It, it really helps your buyer will then be a continuous buyer if you help the process along faster. And it's actually cleared on a priority status, which sometimes even before arrival, it's already cleared. So think about the client who's shipping by air. They're shipping by air because they need it now. So ship it with all its paperwork in order. It gets there and they get it. Otherwise, it's going to get caught in customs and nobody wants to deal with that. And cotton customs, just to be clear, means it's going to cost the customer more money. Is that right? Right. That yeah. is correct. Yeah. Whether it's the customs um, holding fees that they have to pay, going through that process, storage fees. And honestly, the fees in country are different than what is mandated for SGS to, to charge. We don't set any charges that the, the governments do. So again, it's less costly to have it done at export. You know what? So there are no shortcuts. People just no. need to do what they need to do in order to make it work. 
So you know what? I have just a couple more questions before we have our Q&A. And if you're just joining us, I'm speaking with my SGS experts, Lori Ritter and Roger Nunez. And we're talking about trade facilitation services and how you can learn from other people's mistakes so you don't have to make them. So I guess here is my question, and it, it's for you, Roger. Are there any specific products um, that are forbidden to be exported to the MENA, which, as I said before, Middle East, North Africa region? How would a customer know about that? And for instance, um, isn't it correct that the largest partner for the U.S. in the media, MENA region is Saudi Arabia, followed by Egypt? Can you give me some of the specifics about shipping to those areas? Um, yes, PJ, indeed. Uh, um, Saudi Arabia, so uh, United States are, are uh, is, is, is the biggest market for export to Saudi um, among the, the industry related to the oil, the oil production industry and the power generation industry. That's something that obviously they're going to be shipped a lot to these countries because they, this is a, one of the strengths for them. But oh, oh, we have technical. You can't ever have a show without a technical issue. Exactly. But that's okay, Lori. We can continue talking. That whole idea until Roger comes back. That whole idea of being of what's allowed and not allowed in a region. How big a part does that play? in all of this. Oh, wait, Roger, are you back? Are we back online? Yes. Yes, I, yes I, we I are, so, way to go. So let me pick it up when where I left. So um, with these countries, they have a big influence on religion. So the the religious uh, article, the religious uh, uh, restrictions are really strong. So the people have to take into consideration that these countries uh, have a specific uh, rules against the the products that goes against religions some animal derivate uh, using its cosmetic also uh, uh, products that promote substance abuse or in, inside to to gaming or something like that but that's something that the customer had to be really aware and the only way to do it is getting documented and we can support them they can reach out to us and we can advise them what to ship there to, to these countries and what they shouldn't. And the what they shouldn't, obviously, is very important to understand. So your expertise comes very much into play there. Lori, I want to bring it back around to SGS services for the moment. Can you give me a couple of examples of what this kind of work looks like for our customers? Sure. Well, I'm always happy to talk. People that know me, I like to talk. So... <laughs> <laughs> I'm very happy to talk about the services. Yeah, my bestie in office, he knows. Oh, here we go. <laughs> <laughs> so, well, typically, you know, inquiries, you know, do come into the office, they contact, and it, it eventually gets to our office. And one of the, I'll tell you this, one of the things that I like to say is we never, we don't like to say no. <clears throat> what that means is typically we've had traditional um, focus on the, the C of C core business of TFS. Well, lately we've been branching out our, our service reach of, hmm. Now, as you know, SGS is such a large organization. We have 97,000 plus employees worldwide. We have offices in almost every country and we service various sectors, uh, mining, automotive, you know, you name it, we do it. And with that, it's like a client can come to us with a need and sometimes they don't even know what they don't know and we'll look at it between myself and of course my my office bestie and uh the business manager and we we put our heads together and think how can we serve this client so with that the inquiry comes in i start with a phone call and really listen to what the client is saying what do they need and then we put together a proposal for them and say we can help you and, and here it is. Sounds like it's individualized. Would that be a correct assessment? It's very individualized and it's it's not an overnight procedure either. Um, and I'm sure what Roger can tell you that even on the C of C side, there is no quick 
fix to this. There's no yeah. cutting corners. You know, there's there's processes. So yeah. But at the end of the day, when we help a client and they have a successful transaction, that's what we're here for. So it's not a one size fits all. So no. if you're just joining no. us, we are having. Did you want to say something, Roger? Sorry. I no, just, I just, I just, no, no problem. I just want to add to that uh, what you you saying that uh, it doesn't is one fit one fit all. It is because every product is different. Every standard for each product are different, and obviously the documentation and the requirement is, are going to be different. So keep that in mind if you are importing or exporting to one of these countries that each product is going to be different than the the previous one that you just. Uh, and that is just ex export. Got it. Well, if you're just joining us, as I started to say, I'm with my SGS experts, Lori Ritter and Roger Nunez, and we are talking about logistical mistakes and how to avoid them. Uh, we're going to head into our Q&A now, and we'd love to see your questions and comments in the chat window below. Are you guys ready? Our first question. Uh, since we can all learn by example, I'm looking for another couple of examples where people's projects have maybe gone off the ra off the rails. In other words, can you give me a couple of mistakes that you've learned from and others can learn from as well? Lori, let's start with you and then Roger, feel free to jump in. Sure. So having been in international trade, uh, pretty much my entire career, few decades, um, I often hear, we've always done it this way. And I'm sure people listening in, I know I have some fellow colleagues uh, listening on, they're like, yep, a lot of people like say, I've always done it this way. And sometimes that's okay, but sometimes not. As you know, from 30 years ago, technology's different, regulations are different, uh, countries are different. You know, maps are different. How to ship somewhere. It's all different. I go to seminars now all the time to keep up on what's going on. You know, you got to you just have to keep up. Regulations change all the time. Clients now, they're like two years ago. We didn't have to submit documents for whatever reason. Regulations change. You, We just have to be flexible. So with that, um, I recently had a, a client come it was a chemical company and they're they're exporting into a, a new country that is part of the, the PVOC mandated program and consistently was saying we never had to do that before. We've always used this harmonized tariff code. 30 years, same harmonized tariff code. And I'm like, you know, OK, come to find out their tariff code wasn't exactly the right one to be used. And they couldn't figure out why. Why was the stuff getting delayed? Why can't we get our CFC issued? Pinpoint it down to something simple as the tariff code actually was, uh, was changed a little bit. So it wasn't the right one. Now they got the right one and now their, their items are shipping through a lot quicker. And uh, yeah, it, it took a little bit to say, you know, Think of crossing your arms. You're used to doing it one way. Do it another way now. It's uncomfortable at first, but, you know, but having to let them know that their harmonized tariff code of 30 years wasn't right. It was awkward, but it, it was needed to be done. So, well, you have the, the client's best interest at heart. I mean, let's face it. We used to use telex machines, too. We move on. Mm -hmm. So, Roger, what would you like to add? Yeah, so um, for for most of the clients that are new, because of the, the recurring ones are already, you know, uh, they already know the process. But when, if you're a new client and you are uh, planning to export to these countries, so first of all, you have to keep in mind that uh, everything that Lori just mentioned, you just need to add that you just don't need a, a pre-shipment inspection. So this is, a part of the process but keep that in mind that this is a pca is product conformity assessment that means that your product need to be compliant with the standards of safety standards of those countries so just you don't need as a seller point of view you think that you just need a, an inspection to clear your product from custom and send it over to these countries but that take us to the initial discussion 
and exporting without the COC. If your product is not compliant, you cannot be able to get into those markets and you won't be able to clear custom because your product didn't, didn't meet your the, the safety requirements and standard. So keep that in mind. If you're importing, exporting to these countries that you just don't need a, a pre-shipment inspection, you need to have quality documents, test reports, and everything that certified that your product is compliant. So that's something that I, that's the last thing that I want to add. You know what? We have a question from our audience. Let's take a quick look at this question from Ralph, I believe it is. Um, he must have been listening about the Telex comment. How has technology impacted your business as well as your clients? Well, uh, certainly it's expedited, you know, issuing these CFCs. And instead of having to, uh, you know, print them out paper and then ship them out overseas. Everything is via our exporter portal. So it's digitized that way. So it is quicker. Um, Ralph, I actually know, I know Ralph personally. I know he's in the international finance and banking sector. Um, and these CFCs are actually required on letters of credit. And so with that, letters of credit have become very much electronic and, and digitized our CFC process coincides with that. So it helps expedite the whole process. Like I said. Yeah. I, I, I just want to add to that, Lori. Thank you. So sure. that um, the technology has impacted in a very positive way to our operation because it allowed us to do remote inspection where it used to be physical inspection. So that reduced cost, times, and effort. But also, I just want to add that the technology has 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 brought uh, another uh, advantage to to avoid mistakes and avoid uh, counterfeiting our uh, or faking our mm -hmm. certificates because pretty much all of the programs uh, generates a need certificate so it's being electronically so and the importer knows that the certi the certificate of conformity they're, re they're receiving is electronic and they don't need to they they cannot be fooled by companies providing their print uh certificates that they're not they're, they're they don't meet the requirements so this this is a way that uh, how the uh, um, technology has impacted us so it sounds like remote inspections are a huge advancement and, and benefit to our clients. So I, I'm a little bit curious. Um, is it like app based cloud services? Do you use photographs? Like, how do you make it work? Yes, all the above. <laughs> 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 then that's great. You know what? Let's move on to our next question, which is um, I want to know, is it important to know that uh, what the most traded commodity sectors are within a region? And does that help you identify and plan for what comes next? Oh, well, sure. With any business, knowing uh, which product is going to be successful in which country is definitely an opportunity businesses want to take a hold of. So what we look at uh, as far as SGS uh, TFS, we look at the regulations in that country. And if there's a new technology that's coming out or going to go out and you know new equipment going over, we have to be on top of what those regulations are so that when the clients come to us, we're on top of it as well and know, you know what they need to provide uh, in order to meet their standards as well as their expedited customs clearance. Roger. Yeah, so uh, I think I mentioned before, so uh, within the Middle East, the MENA region, so we have uh, one of the biggest uh, industries uh, are, you know, related to oil, um, oil production. So um, we have a lot of intercompanies uh, shipment from the United States to their affiliates in, the, in, those, in those countries. So those uh, those are really technical products that require some specific standards. But among those uh, products, this is, I think, one of the biggest uh, commodities that are being traded. So it's equipment, machinery for all production and uh, electric generation. 
You know, Lori, you and I were talking, um, you know, before, and I, I just want to know um, if you can sort of bring it back around, um, sort of as a wrap up. I want to talk about SGS services in a more broad way. What are the next steps for a client when they come to speak with you? Do they have things that they need to do as homework before talking to you? Or what is that process like? Uh, homework. Nobody likes homework. <laughs> but um, I, I, I would say just contact us. Uh, you can either write through here, LinkedIn. Uh, you can get a hold of Roger and I directly on LinkedIn. Send an inquiry, you know, through just the initial thing is just contact us. And then we can get on a Teams call or Zoom call or regular WhatsApp call. It doesn't matter. Email. And uh, we'll figure it out uh, as far as what would they need. Um, you know, Roger mentioned, yes, with the C of C's. The quality documents are a must. There's no way around that. Um, so you have to have some of that in order before you get going. Uh, but other than that, it's really just contact us and we'll help you, uh, you know, as, as much as we can. Um, and Lori, remember something. Uh, thank, sorry, PJ. So, um, if, but not having a quality documents, it shouldn't be a limitation. Obviously, right. if you can provide it, it's a, it's a, it's a perfect scenario. But we, as, a, as an SGS, is one of our, our biggest strengths that we can offer testing. So if you don't have the quality documents, we can test your products. So for that reason, you also have to contact us. If you don't have the quality documents, you can contact us. Hey, I don't have the quality documents you're requiring. Can you test my product? So this is another way that we can help the client. Got it. You know what? I knew there would be just amazing information. And I want to thank my experts, Lori Ritter and Roger Nunez, for joining me today. They are besties. I'm hoping they'll let me be one, too. Yeah, we're taking applications, remember? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll make sure to toss it again. Thank you again yeah. for joining us. You thank were you. wonderful. Fabulous information. to be here. Thank you. It was a pleasure. Bye. And Have to our time, audience. We Exactly. And to our audience, we want to thank you for joining us today for this very informative session about Trade Facilitation Services or TFS. If you want to get a hold of our experts, you know, leave a comment in the chat below. You can also visit our website always for more great information, SGS. Dot com And there is a link below that is how you can get a hold of Lori Ritter and Roger Nunez. And this has been another Changing Conversations for SGS Live. I'm PJ Kwong. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.